customizability is by far one of the most beloved aspects of gaming PCs. Regardless of whether a person is after maximum performance, blanked out RGB lighting, portability, value, or anything else really, all of these options are made possible thanks to the incredible degree of customizability that PCs offer. That said, while customizability is a blessing, it can also be a curse. We're specifically referring to moments where compatibility rears its ugly head in. And it just so happens that RAM has the potential to be the most confusing component when it comes to this issue. That's why in today's video, we'll be going over everything you need to know to make sure your RAM is compatible with your system. So without any further ado, let's begin. The most common type of RAM in desktop PCs is Double Date Rate Synchronous Dynamic Random Access Memory, or DDR-SD RAM. There are other types of RAM out there, but we won't be taking them into account here because DDR is where it's all at for us casual consumers. Now the first and most important thing you need to get right is the DDR generation. The technology has been around since the year 2000, so it's only natural that it's gone through several iterations since then, with each one offering better performance. At the moment, DDR4 is the most widespread type of DDR memory, but here's the most important bit. DDR memory is not cross-compatible across generations. What this means is that a motherboard which lists DDR4 as the supported type of RAM won't be compatible with DDR3 or the upcoming DDR5. Thankfully, this technology is rather spaced out, so we don't get a lot of generational overlap. However, DDR5 is looming over the horizon, so overlap may become an issue in the near future. So be aware that to upgrade your RAM to DDR5, You'll also need to get both motherboard and a CPU that specifically supports DDR5. With the most important potential compatibility hazard out of the way, let's look at some other aspects that could prove problematic when building your PC, starting with the form factor. RAM modules come in two sizes. There's the standard dual inline memory module, or DIMM, and the small outline dual inline memory module, or SODIMM. The former features 288 pins and is used for standard desktops, whereas the latter features 260 pins and is used in portable computers. Obviously, physical limitations make DIMM incompatible with so DIMM motherboards and vice versa. So long as you don't purchase these smaller modules, you're good. Next up, you should also take a look at what clock speed you want your RAM running at. Both the CPU and the motherboard can be limiting factors here. The CPU specs sheet provides information on RAM speed, but this number only indicates the native speed that the CPU supports. For the max supported clock speed, you'll need to refer to the motherboard specification sheet. Not all motherboards offer extensive overclocking support, so if this is something you're interested in, the first step is to purchase an appropriate motherboard. In any case, if you're a gamer, there's really no need to lose any sleep over this. RAM speed simply isn't as important when it comes to gaming as capacity. Sure, you'll get a marginal performance boost by opting for faster RAM, but that's all it will ever be, marginally better. So if you've got some extra room in your budget, you'll get the most mileage by investing in a better GPU or CPU. And speaking of RAM capacity, here we once again have to refer to the CPU and motherboard spec sheets. Although we can't think of any recent gaming CPUs that don't support at least 32 gigabytes of RAM, so this isn't likely to cause any compatibility issues if you're building a new PC. At the moment, the sweet spot for RAM capacity is 16 gigabytes. You can still scrape by on only 8 gigabytes if you're looking to cut costs, but this will have some implications when playing newer titles. On the other hand, 32 gigabytes is just plain overkill unless you're also running some RAM-intensive software. And before anyone starts invoking future-proofing as an argument for equipping a gaming rig with 32 gigabytes of RAM, we'd like to remind everyone that DDR5 memory is coming out soon. Games are much sooner going to require DDR5 RAM than 32 gigabytes of DDR4. So we could argue that this would be an extra cost that's counterproductive with regards to future-proofing. Lastly, we want to mention multi-channel configurations. This isn't really a compatibility issue in the sense that your RAM won't work if you somehow got it wrong, but it's good to know if you want to get the most out of your RAM. The thing is, if your motherboard supports dual-channel memory, which most motherboards do at this point, it's better to use two low-capacity sticks over a single high-capacity stick. 
So for example, two 8GB modules instead of a single 16GB module. You'll still have the same volume of RAM, but this will lead to better performance by greatly increasing the overall bandwidth. And it'll save you a few bucks, as two 8GB sticks are cheaper to manufacture and therefore more affordable than a single 16GB stick. What's more, if one module proves faulty, you'll still be able to run the PC using the other stick. Whereas if your one and only 16GB stick dies on you, your PC will be entirely out of commission until you replace it. You can take this a step further with quad-channel memory, but this is supported by fewer motherboards. Six- and eight-channel motherboards also exist, but these are mainly used for high-end workstations or servers. And that about does it for this video. To sum it up, the most important thing to check for when it comes to RAM compatibility is the DDR4 generation. DDR4 memory is only supported by DDR4 motherboards and DDR4 CPUs. DDR5 memory will only be supported by DDR5 motherboards and DDR5 CPUs. Once you get this out of the way, the rest is much simpler. Messing up the form factor is really difficult, as SODIM modules aren't easy to find. Clock speed is only a concern if you plan on overclocking. Even budget gaming CPUs support more RAM than you could need as a gamer. And using single-channel memory instead of dual-channel will only result in a somewhat worse performance. To keep things even simpler for you, we've left links for several CPU compatibility checkers in the description. There's also a link to PC Part Picker, which is an incredibly handy tool for checking overall PC hardware compatibility. It's the tool we use while writing and regularly updating our custom PC guides to make sure they always offer the best value. In any case, we hope you found this video helpful. You can let us know if you have by liking it, sharing it with friends, or leaving a comment. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications so you never miss a video. For all things RAM related, you can browse through our channel. Everything that we've briefly mentioned in this video has a full video dedicated to it where we go more in depth with our explanations, so check that out if you're looking to learn more about RAM. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.